Nice. We're back up again. Sorry about the audio, gang. I realized what it was. I think it's better now. Difficult to get anything insightful out of that. Out of that, though. I hope it's okay now. The sound. Uh, I think it was because I had the audio turned on on Twitch accidentally. I didn't realize it. I was I had a mic set up here, so sound good. Sounds good. Awesome, Dragon. Thank you very much. Rest in peace, ears. Saying. <laughs> so we did a little intro, but we'll do another intro uh, soon enough. Okay. And for those of you. Um, that are watching this video that will be watching this video once it's loaded on another platform bitchute youtuber wherever else um, right now we're on february 6 2020 and we're going to do a little analysis of the coronavirus data that uh, i sort of compiled together here grabbed uh, from a website and the initial data was actually no all of this for was from a specific website that i'll show you guys um, and I put the table together and what we're going to do uh, is basically take a look at the graph of each of these columns just to get a feel for where the data is going, right? It's what the data looks like and for us to get a sort of a visual of what to expect, right? What's going on with the coronavirus and um, if the rate of growth is increasing, decreasing where we are with that, right? And this is in the preliminary stages, by the way, right? So hopefully it just dies down next week. No one's talking about it, but the odds are this is going to continue. So there's going to be more data coming up. So what we're going to do at some point is do a follow up to this. And once more data becomes available and take a look at the graphs and see what the graphs have done, right? Hello, Suro. How are you doing? Hey, hey, prof, not prof, just the chicho, right? And we'll wait a couple more minutes just to make sure uh, people have enough time to drop by. Uh, because once we get going, it's good to see all the graphs being presented in one row. Okay. Uh, aside from that, you guys are going to hear some noises in the background. Uh, Josie subscribe Twitch Prime thank you very much you got an emote thanks to Josie 52 subscription right on thank you what's our emote send thanks nice what did we get love snooze <laughs> oh, fun we got a new emote uh, but just to let you know there's might be noisy uh, today and most likely you look like you're you're yes or rush man rush indeed do a uh fanatol and uh neil pert passed away a couple of weeks ago right so huge loss for the music community right but if you do a search for chicho on rush there should be at least a couple of videos where we talk about rush uh rush is one of the greatest bands ever period and yes i've listened to as well a fair bit but rush would be it right and rest in peace, Neil Pert. Right. Uh, so there's going to be noises, most likely in the background. We got new people moving into the complex, and uh, it's going to take him a few days to get in. Most likely. Should we do a little intro? Should I tell you what we're about to do? Uh, here, let me give you a little teaser just to, just so you know what's going on. Uh, this is the data I've compiled together. And let me bring up the first graph, right? Let me take down the table. And this is the first graph we got up, right? I'll go through this. I just want to do one intro that way for people that are going to be watching this after the fact. They know what's going on. And the odds are I'm just going to cut this little segment out and load it up as a, uh, as a short, right? Because the stream is going to go longer than just presenting this data. I think it's important to present the data. You're not popping up on my fall following list. Mm. You might have to do a refresh, I guess, if that's what you mean. Okay, let's do a little intro to this. Okay. I was going to record this, but uh, on a lapel mic and whatnot, but I figure we just cut it up. Hopefully it syncs okay, right? So 
for those of you who are interested in this, okay, what we're doing right now is we're going to do a follow up to a video that we put out uh, about 10 days ago. Okay. And the video is uh, sort of the conversation came up of exponential functions. And what we ended up doing was uh, uh, during a math stream. So what we ended up doing was uh, basically uh, graphing what we knew of the coronavirus as an exponential function. Right, and we loaded this uh, video up on January twenty eighth, two thousand and uh, two, uh, two thousand and twenty. Right, and we called the exponential growth of the Wuhan coronavirus graphing graphing the rate of uh, viral infections. Right, and we were estimating, we were assuming that the virus was going to be doubling every thirty hours, and to a certain degree, it was initially but now it seems to have tapered off a little bit right so we have enough data for basically a couple of extra weeks uh, 14 extra days of uh, things we can look at analyze so that's what we're going to do uh, right now sort of a follow-up on this and take a look at the graphs and just to see how things look okay so let me pick, bring up the table i'm going to kill the display in the background okay the outcoming data currently is not reliable though worth noting it is worth noting and i will be mentioning this stuff once we go through this right this is we're at the beginning stages of what's taking place right the data that you see here in the table is i compiled it from a website from John Hopkins that's providing the data and if you know after we take a look at this graph I'll link up the tables and the links will be available in the description of this video let me for those of you watching live let me give you the link to the site that I'm using and they just released a couple hours ago they just released some additional data okay and uh, I didn't have enough time to load it up uh, to this table and to the graphs right so we're looking at the data available from this website okay from january 19 uh, january 19th 2020 to february 4th 2020 right a month and plus um actually not even a month like how many days is that like a couple of weeks or so right two or three weeks two and a half weeks let's say so we're going to take a look at that data and we're going to graph every single one of these columns right the first one we're going to look at is the rate of infections or how many people are infected in mainland china and then outside of china and then we're going to take a look at the percent growth per day in china because i think that's really important and the percent growth per day outside of china we're going to take a look at the death rate the death totals and the recovered totals and then we're going to look at the death ratio and the recovery ratio and all the data raw data is available here right i had to do a little bit of calculation in each columns um, and if you guys want we can go over the calculations they're, they're quite simple actually it's just percentages and stuff right so not a big deal um, but what i'd like to do is take a look at the take a look at the data take a look at the graphs because that's really uh, what's extremely important uh, is for us to get a visual of what's going on right so let me take down the table and we'll come back to the table if anyone has any questions or whatnot here's the first graph this is the total confirmed cases there's one case right now off the southwest coast of africa Oof, off at the atlantic yeah if it gets into africa and grows into into india right now they say only three cases in india but i'm guessing it's probably more if it gets into africa um, it might grow much faster so we're going to keep this data in mind these visuals right so this is the total confirmed cases that we're getting from the centralized chinese government that what we have right now it's already spreading in india it's already spreading in india i'm pretty sure it is too right so three is my guess is an underestimate right but we're going to go with the official numbers 
because no matter what if this is still exponential growth within two weeks it'll be obvious where we're at with this right even within a week it's going to be pretty obvious right we can take a look at uh you know estimate the rate of growth half you know what the doubling period is and stuff but i didn't get a chance to do it uh, before the stream started they said there's a concern at risk of infection of 5,000 plus people suru and suru is from india so there's some uh, news coming out of there south america the south america is the only unaffected continent save for antarctica yeah i hope it doesn't go into south america either um, we'll see right there are positive uh, things we can look at in the data right this is the rate of infection in mainland china and as of february 4th confirmed it was around twenty seven thousand, right based on the table that we have all right if you look at the table down at the bottom the mainland confirmed cases was twenty seven thousand four hundred, approximately anyway and that's january from january 19th of being 278 right so it's been spreading pretty fast okay so the table uh, the graph here one thing that looks more positive is it's not doing the exponential kick up it's turning into more of a linear hopefully it doesn't s right exponentials when they grow up stuff like this sometimes it burns out and it doesn't s and then later on it disappears right so this is what we see this is the what the data looks like coming out of mainland china okay for the last how many days one 17 days right two and a half weeks right so day one is january 19th and day 17th is february 4th 2020 okay here is what the graph looks like for outside of china including hong kong so this looks more positive because it's looking linear but again there isn't enough data for us to really get a feel for what's going on because in the beginning stages of this virus in china the graph also was sort of linear until we started getting more confirmed cases because there's a 14 day uh, what do you call it where there is no sign of infection right sars did the tapering out uh, you just described eventually completely leveled off eventually completely leveled off which is what we're hoping for right however it did so at a rate of infection death uh, than c corona is currently at yeah and uh, sars it wasn't uh, asys asystematic right so there's a 14 day incubation period where no one's showing any signs with sars people start showing signs right away so there was more care being taken to a certain degree right and we're not 100 percent sure how this is being spread or whatnot uh, the middle east uh, respiratory syndrome mers also did the same if i recall correctly i believe so i believe so so that's what we're hoping for for this right and this is positive we're graphing outside of china including hong kong and the graph looks like this right now confirmed cases now again early stages right so you really don't know what's going on there is enough data available for us right uh, but not bad and considering the rate of infection in china the confirmed numbers aren't doing this they're doing they're coming more towards a linear hopefully this is a sign of what china's infection rate is going to look like right and then taper off so this is the graph for outside of china infection now another column that we ended up graphing let me bring this up again uh, i wanted to graph to see how much the infection was growing per day right and the next two graphs that we're going to take a look at are percent growth per day in china and percent growth per day outside of china including hong kong okay so there's also some reports of possibly some uh, people having recovered from coronavirus can still spread it really like to survive but they are still carriers of the disease for a while after people who recovered and they send send home and they still infected family members or it could be the uh, incubation period the 
asystematic. If they were with the family 14 days before, right, uh, maybe they spread it then and then they got sick. But the recovery rate is pretty slow on this. So if you include 14 days here at the last day, they infected someone and they have a 14 day period. I'm assuming people are not recovering within 14 days. And we're going to take a look at the gr uh, recovery graph as well. And that looks more positive, right? Asymptomatic under the radar stuff, under the radar stuff, right? So the next two graphs we're gonna take a look at is percent growth per day in China and percent growth per day outside of China, okay? So let me take the table down again. They have viral uh, particles in their bodies, but that does not mean they are contagious, yeah. And, from what I understand, this virus is mutating rapidly, right? So hopefully it mutates itself out of existence, right? Hi, Newt. How are you doing? It's over if this comes to New York City. New York City? Oh, I don't know. Uh, sleepy waves. Uh, the biggest concern for me is India and Africa and South America, right? And bangladesh and areas where they can't contain it right where it can't be quarantined where there is enough facilities or drugs to treat people Nut, what we're gonna do i have no idea what you said but we're gonna time you out for now okay because we're looking at morbid data so I rather not have to take deal with things coming in in other languages and to check to make sure they're legit. Okay, apologies if that was a uh, uh, not something that should have happened, but we'll take care of business later. Okay, so right now let's look at the rate of growth per day, right? Percent growth per day in China. This is what the graph looks like. Is there really no cure for we don't know this is brand new right sorry i actually don't know much about it sleepy waves we'll take a look at it i have a couple of um, uh, videos lined up from um, world health organization to watch so you get a feel for what it is i just assumed i thought it was a good idea to go through the data first okay that way everyone has a visual of what it is they're talking about okay there are reportedly things which can help fight recover from it but there's no definitive cure yet that i am aware of yeah i don't think there is yet and that's what the world health organization they put out a video today talking about it right so taking a look at this graph this is percent growth per day in china right as you can tell in any early stages of anything where you're collecting data the beginning stages it's all over the place right so right now you can see at the beginning week 10 days we're all over the place we're going percent growth goes from less than 20 percent to 70 percent to less than 20 40 something percent up to 120 percent so flip 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 high frequency right large range in the data and then it's narrowing down to a level so right now it seems to be narrowing down to a 20 percent growth per day right now right from what happened with SARS and MERS, it's unlikely to develop a vaccine for anytime soon. And hopefully, nature takes care of it, right? They managed to uh, breed, it, uh, breed it in a lab here in Austin, which is the first major step to test cures, which is a great start, which is a great start. Awesome, Josie. Thanks for the info. I was reading the Chinese government is trying to push traditional remedies to treat it possibly dragon why not it came from nature so there might be a natural cure for it right hello spider-man how are you doing i love spider-man so this is the rate of growth per day in china right and if we take a look at the table let me bring up the table again Boop. if we look at one two three four the fifth column right if you look towards the end we're seeing the rate of growth per day stabilizing around 20 percent between 15 to 20 percent 
I want, I want to keep an eye on that just to see. Hopefully it comes down, right? There are articles which say uh, vaccination development will need a few months. Yeah, it's for one understand vaccination is supposed to take a long time unless someone already has a vaccine, right? So this is the rate of growth per day in China. And let's take a look, look at the graph for the rate of growth per day outside of China, which is this. And again, high frequency, high, um, uh, sorry, high range, just oscillating, right? Big margin of error at the beginning and is stabilizing around 10%, right? Which again is better than 80% at the peak, right? The good news, I guess, is that 80% of the fatalities are people over 60 and younger kids as well, right? Or people who are already immune compromised if they're already sick. Well, first they ha have to develop it, which takes time, then approve it, do human trials, which takes time, then produce and distribute, which takes time. And if this thing's kicking into high gear, I'm assuming they'll speed for goal human trials. The people that are sick will be the experiments i guess i'm not sure but if they're going to go through all the hoops in the appropriate time frame it would take a year or more right or longer longer way longer if there's human trials i'm guessing i used to follow some uh, pharma stocks so i know how long it takes to bring things to trial to first phase anyway and it's a long time how long time do we uh how long time do we think like a year uh from my understanding, if it has to go through the hoops, it's going to be longer, right? If they fast track things, possibly within a few months, it all depends how fast things are growing, right? The face masks are becoming a bit of a fashion statement here. Yeah, there's people wearing in my area too. It really develops just how bad it could get, but uh, depends on how bad it could get. But expecting, yeah, like six months to a year. If it's really, really bad, they could expedite it in some cases for sure. There's an article on the origins and uh, family tree of the virus here. Uh, DVD, you would have to post this on uh, our Discord page. No links in chat. Okay. New version of Corona is made by United States of America and they bioattack China and China kept faxing it. Possibly. There's lots of theories out there. We don't know right now. The only thing we're caring about right now is the data the official reports right and we're looking at the official reports because we're at the beginning stages of things right and they're releasing them and people are seeing the effects and both inside of china and outside of china so even if this data is wrong or suppressed we'll find out what's going on in 10 days to two weeks anyway right which we might be doing a follow-up video within a month we're going to know what's going on because the data is going to tell us everything we need to know almost anyway. Nah, bro. It was made by China to call their. We don't know, right? They already have cigarettes for that, though. Evening, Chicho. Zare, evening. How are you doing? Okay. So that's the rate of growth per day outside of China, right? Here is what the graph looks like for the death toll so far, right? This is total death toll inside and outside of China. Outside, there isn't that many, right? So this, this doesn't look good. The death toll within one, two, three, four, five, six days has gone from 200 plus people to 500 plus people. That's doubling. So it's the death toll so far doubling every six days, right? So we can take a look at the table again. I'll show you what graph we're looking at. And we're going to hear some banging noises and stuff. There's people moving into this complex. So uh, unfortunately, our timing sort of sucks on doing this. But this is the death toll. We're in column. I should have numbered these column. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you look at the seventh column, this is what we're looking at right now. Right? So within one, two, three, four, five days, right, the death toll has more than doubled. Okay. The good news is the recovery, if you look at the table, is at a steeper incline, right? So it's gone from 187 to almost 10 times, well, not 10 times, but seven times 
right? Six, six, seven times more have recovered within that period, right? Tell them to stop banging and making noises in the evening. <laughs> no, it's okay, sleepy waves. I let people do live their lives, man. You know, if people are moving in, they're excited, right? They're happy to be moving into a place. And we're happy to have new people around, right? So let them move in, do their thing, right? You can handle the noise. As Alan Watts would say, just think of, think about it as walking in the in the forest and birds are chirping or tree branches are falling. Just noise in the background, right? It's all good. It's all good. How are they treating the virus anyway? I, I don't know. I think they're just possibly antibiotics. What's the treatment for pneumonia? You give them oxygen. You give them antibiotics, huge doses of vitamin C and vitamin D. Um, you give them maybe asthma inhaler stuff. I don't know what that stuff is called. I don't know what the treatment for asthma is, right? So this is the graph for the death toll growing, right? Here is the graph for the recovery and the recovery looks good so that's a huge positive this 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 one is going exponential hardcore right if the death toll is supposed to be two percent which is the next graph we're going to look at right so from the data official reports that we have the death rate percent is two percent right the death ratio is two percent right so if two percent mortality rate then it should be 98 percent recovery right or let's say 90 percent recovery to full health and eight percent might have some long-term side effects right so this graph looks good with the recovery rate right and here's the the death rate right for what we know for the last one two three four five six and this is day 17 is february 4th 2020 right so the death rate looks like it's stabilizing around two percent according to official chinese or actually official numbers because there's only one death outside of china so far so most of the deaths out of the 500 right now it's more it's more six 600 plus but let's say 500 to where we've taken the data 500 plus um you know 500 plus minus one has been in china so the death rate right now is around two percent okay and the recovery rate is growing so the recovery rate because there's a 14 day uh, asystematic that people were and it takes a while for people to recover we haven't been getting any data on the recovery or, or it's been really slow coming and it's starting to accelerate now right so we're seeing the exponential kick up as well in the recovery so that's a positive sign as well right the percent recovered so at the beginning we we're less than two percent now we're peaking above four percent i'm hoping that within a week we'll be well above 20 to 30 to 40 percent recovery rate right which would be fantastic so the way they treat it is antiviral and antibiotic some assistive drugs and putting them on oxygen full-time so it's oxygen full-time that's huge resources right there right huge resources if this thing spreads into countries that can't afford those resources or they don't have the medical system established to build two temporary hospitals within 10 days and and whatnot the machine kicking into gear then the death rate is going to increase without a doubt right with good chicho plutorio how are you doing welcome to another live stream and again this was our table right this is the data we just took a look at so should we flip through all the graphs going backwards and then i'm gonna show you guys uh the world health organization i think we should watch the video there's questions we can have regarding the video the world health organization they did a news briefing today on february 6 2020 and there were questions asked they they sort of side stepped the answers they shared some information which is we can take a look at and discuss further okay but just to recap this is the table we've got we've graphed so far so this is the data we're about to take a look at okay 
the doctor who warned authorities um, in December died today. Yeah, I have that linked actually bookmark right now on an article that we might get to, right? So uh, there's things going on. We don't know. There's a lot of theories flying around. As far as I'm concerned, the best thing we can do is keep calm heads, right? Be informed, be aware, wash hands and be clean in your living space and outside where you are and be aware, right? And we look at the data, right? The data says it all. Mathematics is where it's at, right? That is information that you can grind your teeth in, right? Get a hold of and analyze and take a look at. Okay, so this is the table that we're about to look at the graphs for. And then what we're going to do is just we're going to take a look at some links. And the first thing we're going to do is take a look at a short four and a half minute video that World Health Organization put out explaining what the coronavirus virus is. And then we're going to take a look at a I think it's a half half an hour news briefing I watched today that with World Health Organization answering questions, right? We also make at least some minor preparations. Make some minor preparations. Go get yourself some supplies that you need at home, right? Food, toilet paper, vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, soap, whatever you need, right? Spread awareness for sure. Coronavirus, mancas. I'm not sure if you said that already, sorry. Yeah, spread awareness. The best thing we could do is look at the data and see what's going on. Isn't this like SARS 2.0? I think it's more severe than SARS. Pluto, uh, Pluto, Pluto Reno, Pluto Reno. I think it's more serious than SARS personally. Okay, I wasn't very much concerned about SARS at the time. I didn't spend the time to graph the data. I'm spending the time to graph the data, right? And share it with you guys. I think it's important. Pluto Reno Pluto Reno I figured it out it took me a little bit of time so let's take a look at the graphs in reverse order so we're gonna look at the graph that is on the this side the recovery ratio first and then we're gonna make our way down to the infections in China ha huh. I was living in Southeast Asia doing SARS and no one really cared yeah yeah it wasn't a big deal this is this one is a big deal Chisho should be fine because elderberry is uh, near enough the best natural flu killer is it i have some elderberry liqueur that i might start drinking a little bit increase increase looks uh, increase looks linear does this mean infection rate is less than uh one percent i'm assuming normal flu is no infection rate is uh, is higher than flu which means one person infects 1.3 person no i think the infection rate for uh, coronavirus is between two to three percent as far as we know right um, I didn't grab well we don't know uh, what the um, actually sorry the the death rate is um, around two percent there are not value the rate of spreading is anywhere between two to three percent right I think it's the R not value that you're um, talking about Frank yeah so let's take a look at this stuff. The first graph is the recovery ratio. So as data is becoming available, we're seeing that the recovery rate is increasing, which is fantastic, right? And this is going into full blown exponential mode. So this thing within a week, it should be much, much higher. We've gone from in the last five days or so, we've gone from less than 2% all the way up to above 4%. And we still don't know what has caused it. We don't know what has caused it, right? I think the WHO said the R naught is 99% certainly in the range of 3.0, but probably higher. But probably higher. Okay. Here is the rate, uh, the death rate, which is starting to, and again, this is the beginning stages of what we know, the data coming in, but it's around 2% so far right and most of the deaths have occurred in china so this is the data coming out of china that we're doing the death rate for right since the virus spreading outside of china 
we'll have better idea of what the death rate is okay once more data becomes available hopefully not hopefully it just dies down it's over okay this graph here is the recovery the total number of of people that have recovered which is fantastic it's looking like it's growing fast right it's gone from less than 200 to close to 1200 in a matter of one two one two three four five days so within five days the recovery the number of people that have recovered has gone off five times which is fantastic it is not perfect 1.3 for normal flu means people with the flu tend to infect yeah 1.3 people the cost seems to be currently wet market bush made in china supposedly bats that's the current belief anyway could probably be well change in time will probably change in time i read i read something some doctors in southeast asia might have found a cure or a way to fight it or something yeah we're going to get a lot of either facts or noise coming out and hopefully they have right so the recovery rate is growing fast unfortunately the people recovering right so the recovery rate is growing and the rate of and the number of people recovering is growing unfortunately <laughs> the death uh, the people dying is also increasing right <laughs> i know this is data focus but what's your take on experts saying the US over uh, is overreacting to the outbreak? I don't think this is an overreaction. Okay. Uh, I think when there's anything, any type of virus which is growing initially at an exponential rate with an R naught value that is infecting more people with a asymptomatic for twelve, you know, two weeks, that china has initially by last week they had quarantined 60 million people it's cause to concern right cause for concern right we should be aware of what's going on and we should look at the data right do we have good estimates guesses for what it could have been caused by i hear it's bad meat in third world countries but you know how people say ridiculous yeah they say meat market bats Sna initially with snakes and then bats um, we don't know some theories are that it was uh, engineered some theories is a bioweapon some theories it was escaped from la some people's theories is drug we don't know we don't know i'm very excited to see people washing their hands more i hope it's a culture culture that can stick around yeah for sure the way that southeast asia doctors had found to treat it if i'm not mistaken was ironically h oh i heard about that too um i heard that's uh, neither here nor there com hiv combative drugs though these help but didn't guarantee recovery okay if it's true then great because the stuff is available right so what i wonder if the number of infected people increases linearly then the infection rate must be less than one that's why there's doubt in the numbers that's why there's doubt in the numbers uh, i could go for some fried bat right about now i couldn't i wouldn't want to touch yeah i heard the snake thing yeah so this is the number of dead and it's increasing right the this graph is the growth percent growth per day outside of china uh the number of number of infected right so number of infected the numbers are growing around 10 percent right now right outside of china which if it continues to grow at 10 percent it's not good it's it's still growing you want to cut that that back down right yeah i work i work many retail jobs movie theaters video game stores costco is absolutely insane how many people do not wash their hands yeah and how many people wipe their hands on railings and just drag their hands on railings and different things it's weird to me personally sorry if i keep going off no no you're not legendary rob boss how are you doing did you hear a in real life twitch streamer 
got the coronavirus. No, no, I didn't hear about that. Rob Boss. That's unfortunate. But there is dangers of it, right? So rate of growth outside of China, right? Percent percent growth per day is around 10% outside of china and right now it's stabilizing around 20 percent inside of china right or a little bit less than 20 percent so again it's still growing but it's not as we see one day here the rate percent per day going up to 120 percent which would be a lot right which would be unfortunate right and this is the total confirmed cases outside of china right including hong kong and it looks linear which is a good thing if it's linear it will taper off sooner if it's growing exponentially every doubling period uh, it's going to kick things up a lot more right so this thing growing linearly outside of china is a good sign if we're graphing it right and again this is at the beginning stages right because it started off in china so china is about a month um, start to the infection spreading right so hopefully we don't see the rate kicking up outside of china and this is the graph for total confirmed cases inside of china and it's starting to go towards a linear not yet right so we're still exponential growth and we'll know more within a couple of weeks or within a week okay and what we'll end up doing okay is most likely doing another stream where we're going to do an update to this table okay and do more graphs so i just want to share that data with you guys just so you know where i'm coming from and you have a good visual of what's happening so no you know paranoia doesn't take over hysteria doesn't take over uh, people and also people don't dismiss what's happening right information is your friend data is your friend mathematics one of the best tools we have at our disposal to get a better appreciation for what's going on in the world okay and anything like this the data comes in fast so it's a really good opportunity to look at use our math abilities to look at data and start analyzing some of the stuff okay that's what i wanted to cover for this initial stage now what we're going to do on the live stream for those of you watching on this video on another platform once the live stream is over we're probably going to end the video now thanks for uh watching for those of you in the live stream we're going to share some links we're going to watch some videos we're going to read some articles possibly and have a little bit more discussion as to some of the theories possible things that are taking place okay so let me take this table down and let's bring up our uh, let me show you where I've gotten the data from, right? Let me open up my display. Let's kick this down. Okay. This is where I'm getting my data from. Okay. Can we talk about how China is dealing with it? Sure, Sleepy Waves. I'm excited for the update to see how it progresses as a realistic level. At a realistic level. Yeah, same here. Uh, I love Spider Man. Uh, once we put out the video, and this is the video. Um, that we did right uh, that we it just came up that during the math stream that we were doing uh, we did the video on exponential growth on the Wuhan coronavirus graphing the rate of viral or viral infections Google or YouTube has posted this WHO link I guess to everything coronavirus related uh, but initially we only had the data up to basically here right there was only like 2,000 people confirmed right now we're at 27,000 so and we released this video on January 28th 
but we recorded I believe January 26 so since January 26 is gone from 2000 to you know today it's over 30,000 so that's pretty fast growth right and this is the data that where I'm getting my data from if you take a look at this down here is the the table where they tally up the data every day right and usually the next day coming up which is they've already tallied it up for today which is uh, it's one day lagging today is February 6 this is from the data from February 5th they've confirmed it right so the 30,000 that you see here 31,000 that you see here this is the numbers being tallied up for February 6 that they're gonna release you know they're getting the data so there's a lag one day lag and on this side on the right side of the page um, there is you know total number of deaths right now is a 638 and total recovered is 1500 uh, 1551 okay there's definitely some horse horror stories coming out of china about it yeah there are there are yeah i watched that i was hoping you do an update on it glad to have caught it yeah uh absurd the con absurd the con um one like for me this is morbid math but for me when something like this happens if i get if i'm interested in it uh you know i do this type of thing with other data sets as well so i thought this was a good opportunity to go through this stuff and talk about it a little bit uh how and when did they measure new infected people if they just count people with symptoms then i think the real infection rate is already uh, uh, lower i'm assuming it's higher you mean frank but can we trust the numbers who is uh, sourcing those numbers this is from it's coming out of uh, john hopkins john johns hopkins right so it's a legitimate source but you know the question is can we trust the numbers coming out of china it are the numbers in india really like if you scroll down here you can see this thing says india down here is still at three but i don't think india is still at three i can't see this being still at three and you can by the way you can scroll out of here right and you can see the whole world right so you can scroll out and you can see the whole world and there's infected cases let me bring this over there's infected cases in canada united states asia is growing big there's some in europe and from whatever we understand there's case in africa as well and there's one in the middle east and australia has been hit as well right and then you can zoom in so it's a nice interactive map can we trust the numbers if it's growing exponentially it's just going to delay the inevitable where we're going to know what's going on right because of the incubation time yeah those red dots give off a fear-mongering vibe they look like fallout of right yeah and you can when you scroll in the the circles become smaller right so uh, too bad they don't have oh they do have the numbers you can click on the red dots and you see confirmed cases in hubai is 22,000 number of deaths that's the center right the main city i guess is 618 and recovered is 888 right so if you click on the dots you can zoom uh, what do you call it you get more information per dot which is nice i hadn't done that before i don't remember doing that before right i like that i live in finland where winter is minus 20 degrees celsius i've heard there could be way more deaths than is reported yeah i heard that as well rob boss well if you believe there's a, there's yeah the tenset i was about to mention the tenset numbers that got leaked yeah the a report came out of but you got to take that with a grain of salt as well because from that's from taiwan the news agency right so again it really depends where the information is coming at us right so according to the Ta taiwan news report uh, a leak report there there was thirty thousand 
people infected and I believe the death was about over 20,000 or so but that's you know we don't know that's one place that's reported it and that could have been politically motivated because there's huge turmoil right now between Taiwan and China mainland China right so take that with a gigantic grain of salt yeah but in John Hopkins just taking what China is reporting or is it independent it, I'm assuming they're taking what the World Health Organization is reporting right because down here take a look on this website they tell you where they're sourcing their information from right so a visualization john hopkins cssi support data source from who cdc c e c d c h n h c and d x y and you can click on all these links and they'll take you to the websites i've clicked on some of them like where i went to who and stuff like this world health organization and stuff blog contact read more on the blog the contact info downloadable sheet they have a whole bunch of stuff right um like on the table that we had some of the data i got from the google spreadsheet that they had here right because i wasn't using this website right off the bat and writing down the death numbers so every day i go through and write out write down the death numbers and the recovery numbers uh, and you can click on it you go to the spreadsheet you can zap them there uh, from uh, what do you call it from this uh, from this uh, website right so i'm sort of i have this website opened up and pinned as a tab so i'm updating my spreadsheet on a regular basis okay that one red dot in the middle of the ocean atlantis don't know incubation time is two to 14 days uh, uh anti i keep on calling it incubation but it's so easy to call it incubation but is asymptomatic phase so the rate we see today is two to four 14 days old yeah has japan had any yeah japan's had cases how many cases has japan had da -da 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 -da. japan has had in here uh you can see it 86 cases here i'll highlight it 86 cases in japan right for some reason as soon as i highlight that stuff it kicks us off All right. a few yeah death numbers are instant uh instant but confirmed infected numbers are delayed uh for some days yeah and then i wouldn't say the death numbers are instant either because there could be people who have died in their apartments in their homes right that we don't know about okay what i'd like to do is here let's let's do this gang let's watch a video and this is from the world health organization right let's watch a video it's a short video like four 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 and a half minute video of what this virus is all about so i'm going to play this you guys let me know how the sound is okay uh, hopefully it's not too loud it should be okay i tested it earlier oh hold on a second i haven't turned on the sound on my thing Boop. this should be you know what i'm gonna put this on too i'm gonna listen to it as well apologies if there's gonna be sound noise coming in from the mic okay let me put this on so we can confirm that the sound is okay it's coming in okay my little hokey pokey uh, headphones so let's take a look I'm just going to confirm that the sound for this is good. Investigations. Is that too loud? It seems a little loud from my end. Oh man, there was a report in Boston, way too close to New York City. Yeah, I'm guessing it's going to come there. Okay, so let's play this again. If the sound is too loud, let me know, gang. Okay. In December 2019, there was a cluster of pneumonia cases in China. Investigations found that it was caused by a previously unknown virus, now named the 2019 novel coronavirus. In this video, we'll take a quick look at what's currently known about the virus. Keep in mind that this is a new virus, and what's known about the virus now might change in the future. Coronaviruses are a large group of viruses. 
They consist of a core of genetic material surrounded by an envelope with protein spikes. This gives it the appearance of a crown. Crown in Latin is called corona, and that's how these viruses get their name. There are different types of coronaviruses that cause respiratory and sometimes gastrointestinal symptoms. Respiratory disease can range from the common cold to pneumonia, and in most people, the symptoms tend to be mild. However, there are some types of coronaviruses that can cause severe disease. These include the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus, first identified in China in 2003, and the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus that was first identified in Saudi Arabia in 2012. The 2019 novel coronavirus was first identified in China. It initially occurred in a group of people with pneumonia who'd been associated with a seafood and live animal market in the city of Wuhan. The disease has since spread from those who were sick to others, including family members and healthcare staff. There are many cases at present, and the disease has spread within China and also to a number of other countries. So, where did the virus come from? It's known that coronaviruses circulate in a range of animals. Sometimes these viruses can make the jump from animals to humans. This is called a spillover and could be due to a range of factors such as mutations in the virus or increased contact between humans and animals. For example, MERS-CoV is known to be transmitted from camels and SARS-CoV from civet cats. The animal reservoir of the 2019 novel coronavirus is not known yet. How is it transmitted? The exact dynamics of how the virus is transmitted is yet to be determined. In general, respiratory viruses are usually transmitted through droplets created when an infected person coughs or sneezes or through something that has been contaminated with the virus. People most at risk of infection from the novel coronavirus are those in close contact with animals, such as live animal market workers, and those who are caring for people infected with the virus, such as family members or healthcare workers. So, how does the disease present? Well, from what is known so far, there can be a number of symptoms ranging from mild to severe. There can be fever and respiratory symptoms such as cough and shortness of breath. In more severe cases, there's been pneumonia, kidney failure, and death. The mortality rate is not known yet. How can we tell whether someone is infected? The infection can be diagnosed by a test called PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. This test identifies the virus based on its genetic fingerprint. There's currently no specific medication for the virus, and treatment is supportive care. There's currently no vaccine to protect against the virus. Treatment and vaccines are in development. How do we prevent transmission of the virus? This new virus currently has a limited geographic spread. However, there are a number of standard hygiene practices that have been recommended to protect against infection and further spread. These include covering your mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing with a medical mask, tissue, or flexed elbow avoiding close contact with those who are unwell, the appropriate use of masks and personal protective equipment, especially in a healthcare setting, washing hands regularly with soap and water or alcohol-based hand rub. Actions that can be taken to prevent infection from an animal source include avoiding unnecessary unprotected contact with animals, washing hands after contact with animals or animal products, and ensuring that animal products are cooked thoroughly before they're consumed. It's important to stay home if you're feeling unwell, but if you have a fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early and share your previous travel history with your healthcare provider. That's a quick look at this emerging infectious disease. Given that this outbreak is evolving rapidly, what's known about this virus can change. Please check the websites below for the most up-to-date information. Okay, so when does when was this released? This video was released. This was released January 31st, 2020. So six days ago. Okay. So keep that in mind. Does it infect animals too? Um, they're carriers. I don't know how it affects if it kills them or not. I don't know. As an American, of course, my first thought is, Will the CDC uh, cover all the treatment costs? Oh, dragons, good question. 
very informative thank you no worries i love spider-man and again this is coming from the world health organization so there's probably more to it um, but it's a good starting point and we should always question any type of information coming from centralized institution right that makes it seem so much more relaxed than what the media is making everyone pa panic over agreed i love spider-man uh, which is one of the reasons i wanted to really do these right uh, aside from looking at the data like for me i'm aware cautious but not freaking out not panic right not until the data says hey concern should go up a lot more right this video makes me want to wear a mask <laughs> make sure you uh, you wear the right kind of mask some are useless yeah they have to have i believe the little thing they have here where they breathe in this filter and stuff so now that we know what world health organization released six days ago a week ago and they've done some press releases since then right and before then let's look at the press release that they released today okay uh, this was released 13 hours ago and we're getting it from rt because i couldn't find it anywhere else right and rt is a source that i do use okay so they were the first ones right off the bat releasing this um i don't follow any mainstream news sources so and for one understand they haven't released anything because they did other searches to try to find and everybody is linking to this video right so let's listen to this and this is a 33 minute news briefing from uh, from the world health organization okay so let's take a look at this hopefully this video is appearing in complete let me just to make sure yeah it's complete enough okay so let's do this and i'll keep my eyes on the chat and it's 33 minutes i got some snacks i got some apples all right hopefully you got some snacks if you want to watch the whole thing and there are questions being asked they you know we can talk about it in chat or talk about it after the video is done um and I do have a couple of cookies here. Chocolate crispy cookies uh, to watch or rewatch because I've already watched this video. Okay. Should we do, gang? Are we watching the entire thing? Uh -huh. Yeah, I love Spider Man. Let's do it. All right? Because some of the stuff is just they're playing politics. You know, they're not supposed to be, but you can tell they're playing politics. They do answer a question regarding the doctor that passed away right in china they some of the questions that you guys have asked has is being asked of them so it's good to see what the world health organization is organization is saying if you have a notepad you want, you want to make little notes of the things that you might not agree with right because there's a few things that they said here i said okay they're 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 dodging the question they're not really answering it because they either don't know or they they don't have the uh they don't want to release the data or they want more data coming in uh, but there is some good stuff here and again this is the world health organization so take it with a grain of salt but it is the major body that's watching over this thing so if we're looking at official numbers it's a good idea to keep track of what these people are reporting as well as well as other information coming out and this is by the way here's the doctor that first uh, reported the crow hey, where the picture go oh they took his picture down what so this is uh chinese uh, coronavirus whistleblower dies of coronavirus the one who released the information and this one is a um, center for disease control i have this website open as well i looked at some of the stuff here for the united states and whatnot but uh, i think we're just gonna um and this is a nurse that was releasing some information uh but we'll skip that one as well okay so let's listen to this i'm going to put up the chat uh, for masks you want to okay i'm going to read this first surua for masks you want a n95 minimum ideally n100 you want a mask which actually has a filter <laughs> filter and proper seal and if possible you want a mask which covers your eyes or even just entire face because people have been uh, getting infected through their eyes if you don't have a mask with eye protection then you'll want goggles with a proper seal 
Okay. Thanks, uh, Suru. And my coughing is from a flu I had a month, month, over a month ago, the beginning of January. It was the flu. I'm recovering, luckily, right? So let's listen to this. Take maybe a few more questions from journalists online today. Welcome to everyone uh, watching us uh, online. As always, we will have an audio file uh, available immediately after uh, for those here just to remind you one more time that we will have to leave this room immediately after the press conference and we hope to finish the press conference uh, by a quarter two uh, because the room is needed for another meeting and i will with that give an immediately floor to the director general dr tedros and we have dr maria and we have uh, uh, dr mike ryan with us today uh, dr tedros Thank you, thank you, Tariq. Good afternoon once again, and uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, first, uh, the latest uh, numbers of the outbreak. As of 6 a.m. Geneva time today, uh, there were 28,060 confirmed cases in China and 564 deaths outside China. There are 225 cases in 24 countries and one death. Yesterday, as you know, we launched our strategic preparedness and uh, response uh, plan asking for 675 million US dollars to investing in stopping this outbreak. As I mentioned, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has already made a generous contribution and Japan has also made a contribution of 10 million US dollars uh, today and there are a lot of other signals of support we expect more announcements uh, in the coming uh, days we welcome support for uh, from all donors uh, big and small because every dollar uh, counts we are also mobilizing the full power of the UN system uh, after our conference, press conference yesterday, I briefed the Secretary General and other UN leaders. And today we had a call with more than 200 UN country representatives in more than 200 countries. This follows yesterday's call with WHO country representatives. It's hard to believe that just two months ago this virus was unknown to us. We have already learned so much about it. We know it's DNA. We know it can be transmitted from one person to other. We know that those most at risk are older people and those with underlying health conditions. Having the genetic sequence of the virus has enabled the rapid development of tests and as I mentioned yesterday, we have shipped 250,000 tests to more than 70 labs around the world. And we're training lab workers to use them. But there is still a lot we don't know. We don't know the source of the outbreak. We don't know what its natural reservoir is. And we don't properly understand its transmissibility or severity. To defeat this outbreak, we need answers to all those questions. And there are tools we don't have. We have no vaccine to prevent infections and no therapeutics to treat them. To put it bluntly, we're shadow boxing. We need to bring this virus out into the light so we can attack it properly. That's why on February 11 and 12, we're convening a global research and innovation forum to identify research priorities and coordinate the international research effort to find therapeutics and vaccines. This will be a meeting of scientists from all over the world, including China, both in person and virtually. The aim is to fast track the development of effective diagnostic tests, vaccines, and medicines. One of the key challenges 
is coordinating research funders to support key priorities. A lot of donors want to help, but we need to direct them to support agreed priorities rather than going off in different directions. I have said we need to be led by facts, not fear, and signs, not rumors. That's exactly what we're doing. We're late letting signs lead. But this is not something we have only just thought of. This is something WHO has been working for years. Following the West African Ebola outbreak, we developed the WHO R&D blueprint, a global strategy for developing drugs and vaccines before epidemics and accelerating research and development activities during epidemics. It speeds up the availability of the medicines and technologies that save lives. We have seen that with the rapid development of an Ebola vaccine. But vaccines and therapeutics are not silver bullets. And they will take time to develop. In the meantime, there are simple things everyone can do. Wash your hands regularly and cover your nose and your mouth with your elbow when you cough or sneeze. That's the personal hygiene. Keeping the world safe is in our DNA. If countries invest now in prevention and research, we can avoid more cases and more costs down the line. I thank you. Back to you, Tariq. Thank you very much, Dr. Tedros. As we have limited time, we will go directly to questions. We will take uh, one or two from the room, and then we will go online, because yesterday uh, we have not been able to take any. And please, uh, in the interest of having as many people as possible to ask questions, can you please ask only one question and not go in a long list? So uh, we will go one, two, and then we'll go online, please. If you can just uh, come and uh, press the... Hello, thank you, Tariq, uh, for that, Dr. Tedros, Shane from China Central Television. My question is, right now at this time of the day, I remember yesterday, Dr. Mike said that the nurses and doctors in the front line are the real heroes. So, but now we also see some strikes in Hong Kong for the doctors here. They just refuse to do the job. So at this time of the uh, situation, what do you think that the doctors and nurses should do to help the patients and what to call for the spirit to support them? Thank you. I think this I is, think this is I say I, it many times, this is a time of solidarity. Mm, you know, there is a common uh, enemy now, uh, a very unknown virus. And I advise all of us that we focus on the fire, virus, uh, the common enemy. I can understand um, the pressure on health workers. And that's why Mike said um, uh, they're the heroes. And I fully, I fully agree, and I want, I want them to continue to be like that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stephanie. One question, and then we will go, we will go to journalists online. Stephanie, please. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Reuters, Stephanie Nebehe. Um, you've had, uh, I think, about 4,000 cases announced um, overnight. Are you, well, we're coming out of some of the incubation periods, um, the, the upper bounds for some of the incubation periods for some people. Um, are you getting a sense that we're perhaps nearing the peak, or is it too soon to say that? I don't know if that's rather perhaps a question for Mike. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, no, I think it's uh, it's it's right now um, too early to make predictions on numbers. Although we are pleased that the numbers from today is the first day in which the overall numbers of confirmed cases reported in China have dropped, and so we we we're thankful, and I'm sure our colleagues in the front line in China are thankful for that too. But that is very difficult to make any prediction related to that. We're still in the middle of an intense uh, outbreak, and uh, we need to be very careful on making any predictions. Sorry, can you just clarify what you mean by an 
The new confirmed cases. Are really You're seeing this in graphs. It looks like the cumulative number looks like the daily numbers are rising, but the actual number reported today compared to the number reported yesterday is actually down on the day. And doesn't mean anything, but at least it's not going in the wrong direction. And equally, <clears throat> we've seen and we've said this before, uh, there has that been that constant increase in, in cases in Hubei uh, province, but we haven't seen that same acceleration in provinces outside Hubei, and equally we haven't seen that acceleration in Hong Kong and Macau in, uh, in Taiwanese uh, uh, people either. So I think, uh, again, uh, we're seeing uh, a, res a relatively stable situation outside Wuhan, Hubei, but as you said, Stephanie, and you are correct, there are cycles of transmission and we may see those cases increase in the coming days. But at least uh, for the moment, uh, uh, things are uh, stable. But, but 4,000 or nearly 3,700 cases of coronavirus confirmed in a single day is, is nothing to celebrate. It's certainly still a great worry. Thank you very much. We will now go uh, online and uh, please, one question per journalist. Uh, let's try Nurit uh, from uh, NPR. Nurit, we didn't uh, uh, get to speak to you yesterday. Can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I wanted to um, ask you about um, uh, Wuhan Dr. Li Wenliang. He's one of the doctors who first reported concerns about the coronavirus cases back in early January and who was reportedly arrested by police for spreading rumors. There's a report now that he contracted uh, coronavirus himself and he has now died. Um, do you have any comment about this? Thank you, Nurit, for this question. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we're we're very sad to, to hear of the loss of uh, Dr. Li Wenyang. Uh, we're very sorry to hear the loss of, of any frontline worker who's uh, attempted to care for patients, and uh, we ourselves have lost our friends in the front line. So we should uh, celebrate his life and mourn his death with his with his colleagues. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now go to Kai Kufreshmit. Uh, Kai, can you hear us? Yes, thanks for taking, uh, taking my question. So um, I, I really wanted to ask uh, what the situation is, what you can tell me about um, Africa. What is the diagnostic capabilities that are there? You know, how are things being tested and, and what are you doing to make sure that, that, that you know, if it is introduced, the virus, that there will be, you know, that, that there is the capacity to deal with it? Thank you, Kai, for the question. So I'll take that question. So thanks for that. So we have um, a global laboratory network that is, is meeting uh, multiple times per week to discuss how we can improve and increase diagnostic capacity. Um, there are referral labs that have been identified across the globe where samples can be shipped to support countries that don't currently have the capacity. Secondly, we are working to increase national capacity and we're building upon the influenza labs that exist globally. Um, and thirdly, we are trying to procure um, and identify uh, tests that can be shipped. And as the Director General said, more than 250 or 250,000 tests were shipped this week. We're also looking for other sources of tests that can be shipped so that those labs that can do diagnostic work, molecular testing, PCR testing across Africa, can detect cases quickly. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Maria. Now uh, we will go to uh, uh, Jeremy uh, Lange from RFI. Jeremy, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you, Tarek. Um, a quick one for Dr. Tedros. You mentioned earlier that some countries of are withholding information about coronavirus, or at least not sharing them in due time. And uh, Human Rights Watch, on the other hand, pointed out that China might have been hiding information at the beginning of the epidemic so, and, and made things worse. I'd like to have you comment on that. Thank you, Jeremy. Do you want to say? Um, the uh, we, we're still uh, waiting data from a, from a number of countries in terms of fully completing their uh, their sending of data to WHO. But with regard to your your question regarding uh, China. 
in terms of data. It, it, it's uh, it's very difficult at this stage to look retrospectively and reimagine what the dynamics of the epidemic were in, in late December, early January. But from our observation of the of, of the situation, China has uh, reported those first clusters in association with the Wuhan uh, with the Wuhan market and did that in an extremely timely fashion. But uh, there are uh, we don't know the source of the of the outbreak as such, and we don't know that there may have been one or two or three different animals involved in possibly in different settings. What we do know is that the Chinese authorities had a special surveillance system in place for picking up unusual pneumonias. That system was active in Wuhan, and as soon as that system activated with a cluster of unusual pneumonia cases, they were reported immediately to WHO, and subsequent laboratory investigations were undertaken. There's a difference between what may be happening at a community level and what the public health system can detect and respond and, and report. And from our perspective, the public health authorities in China, as soon as they detected an unusual signal, you can imagine here in China, it's winter, it's the flu season. Uh, people with pneumonia, it isn't an unusual thing. Two people or three people, there are millions of people living in Wuhan. So picking out a signal of an unusual event that may be associated with a particular place is not an easy thing to do. It's very easy to look back in retrospect, and it's very easy to assign uh, uh, some kind of easy process that should have been carried out. It is not that easy. The signal was picked up from a very large signal of winter disease and winter pneumonia, and that was reported to us uh, immediately by public health authorities, and for that we're very grateful. And maybe if we see it in other words, as you know, China is uh, the most connected country with the rest of the world. Um, cases would have made it to other countries if there was a serious hiding in, in, in China. Because China may be able to hide what's happening inside, but cannot hide the number of cases in other countries. And as you may remember, when we had cases in China, there was no case in the rest of the world. And when the number of cases was increasing in China, even when we declared FIC, the number of cases elsewhere was not uh, more than 100. Even as we speak, we have um, uh, outside China 225 cases, while in China we have more than 28,000. So it's very difficult, given the facts, to say that China was hiding um, because, you know, many Chinese travel and many cases would have met it if there was a delay. So that's how we understand it. But as I said yesterday, for anyone who wants to know what happened from, that, from the start to the end, we will have the after review action that we will do with China to learn from what happened from the, end, from the start to the end and learn from it and then prevent any problems in the future. Thank you very much, Dr. Ryan and Dr. Tedros. Uh, we go now to Betsy from Wall, um, Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Betsy, can you hear us? Can you hear it? Yes, uh, thank you, Tarek. Uh, I have a question uh, for Mike based on some comments from yesterday. Uh, Mike, you mentioned that um, you are doing assessments of public health measures, I guess, such as quarantine taken by countries around the world. I wonder if you could um, talk about that a little bit more. What are you assessing and what you plan to do with these assessments? Yes, uh, thanks for the question. The, um, the, the assessment is, is, is almost complete. O under the IHR, uh, where WHO has issued temporary recommendations, where countries have exceeded or appear to have exceeded those recommendations, uh, we are bound by the IHR to seek information from that member state regarding the rationale they've used for exceeding the measures as advised in the IHR. The IHR does not De deny or prevent. Uh, it doesn't uh, prevent a country from taking measures, but what it does is it requires the countries to justify the risk assessment and the value of the public health measures from their perspective. And this is a very important balance because it's very easy to make, uh, very difficult to make a law that can, uh, an international law that can predict every eventuality and, and every particular circumstance that might occur. So all risk assessment in public health. Uh, 
uh, in some senses is local. It is depending on the local situation, the local dynamics, uh, the local capacities. Because in some circumstances, countries may feel they don't have the capacity to take one measure, but they do have a capacity to take another measure. So it's like having tools in a toolkit. Sometimes you have a limited toolkit and you have to use it in a certain way. So we have to respect the fact that countries have to make certain decisions based on their, um, their circumstances, based on the threat that they perceive, and very often sometimes based on community perceptions. The, the, the culture uh, perception of fear for contagion is very different all over the world and, and governments have to respond also to community expectations and perceptions around protection of their health. So governments are in a very difficult position, they have a very fine balance to strike and what we try to do is make that decision transparent and we share that justification with all of the other member states. So at least other member states see what that justification is. So that's the process we're completing at the moment. Thank you very much. One more question from online, and we are then uh, back in the room. Uh, Anne Gallen from Telegraph. Anne, can you hear us? Yes. Oh, hello. Yes, yeah, thanks very much for taking my question. Um, you said um, one of the things that you weren't sure about was the severity of the disease. And I just wondered now, with all the case reports coming through, um, whether you have at least at the sort of beginnings of an idea of how severe the disease is. I just wondered whether, you know, um, people really do need to be in hospital or whether that's just a kind of, um, you know, a precautionary measure or whether um, the disease is more severe than other sort of similar uh, pneumonia type illnesses. Thank you. What we're seeing from the reports on severity, so as you know, our, the big things that we're looking at are, at are severity and transmission. And with regards to severity, we have a clinical network that we've pulled together that meets multiple times per week. Uh, we have clinicians that are actually treating patients at, across the globe, um, and they are sharing their experiences of dealing with these patients. And what we're seeing and what we're hearing from these reports is that there is the full spectrum of disease. You have mild cases, which, which look like the common cold, which have some respiratory symptoms, sore throat, runny nose, um, fever, all the way through pneumonia. Um, and there can be varying levels of severity of pneumonia all the way through multi-organ failure and death. So it is that full spectrum of disease. What is important is to determine which proportion of those infected fall in that spectrum of disease. We know that their underlying conditions and advanced age uh, make an individual more at risk for developing severe disease and death. Individuals who are over 60 years old have a higher risk of death. Uh, individuals with underlying conditions like diabetes, like hypertension. Um, unfortunately, these are common um, comorbidities that we see are risk factors for respiratory pathogens, including this, this novel pathogen. Um, the clinical network is having very detailed discussions around the progression of disease. Um, they're having detailed discussions about what are the certain types of characteristics of these individuals, um, looking at pregnant women, if pregnant women are infected. Um, and so more will come from these teleconferences, and we will share more as we learn more. Thank you very much. We go back to the room for a few questions here. We had one question here, then Elaine. Uh, okay, Xing from Xinhua News Agency. Can you hear me? Uh, Dr. Tedros, uh, since January 23rd, the population of Wuhan has been confined in their city for almost 15 days now. So we have to say they sacrifice a lot for the prevention of spreading the virus. Is there anything right now that you want to say, any messages that you want to send to them at this difficult time for them? Thank you. Yeah, I think um, the Wuhan people and Hubei province in general, uh, they're paying a lot. And first of all, uh, I would like to appreciate them and thank them for their cooperation and for believing that the actions they are taking, it protects their people and also it protects the rest of the world. And doing this for humanity is something beyond words. And I am really thankful for that and proud of what they are doing and much gratitude. I was in Beijing and I wish I had uh, visited uh, Wuhan, but I would like to assure the Wuhan people or the residents of Wuhan that I will go and visit them. 
one day, um, hopefully very soon, but at the same time express that uh, my spirit is actually always with them and with others who are fighting this dreadful uh, virus. And we're in it together and with this kind of solidarity and thinking for one other, another, we're one human race, I know we will defeat this uh, virus. Thank you for reminding me and hope to see them. But until then, I wish them all the best. And I feel that I am among them actually today as I speak even. Uh, Shishi. Thank you, Dr. Tedros. Uh, Elaine, please. Dr. Tedros, Elaine Fletcher from Health Policy Watch. We're seeing a lot of high-income countries imposing travel restrictions, as you've discussed, while many low-income countries and middle-income countries have left their doors wide open. The U.S. this morning in the EB asked if WHO could provide some more technical guidance on what should be done, because people are perhaps very confused, and maybe the countries that, uh, that are most uh, vulnerable might be left more vulnerable if they don't have any guidance on these sorts of uh, measures they should take. Is, is there a paradox here with what's going on? No. Um, actually, um, high-impact quarantine measures are some of the most expensive measures to implement uh, that you could imagine. And uh, low-income countries have choices to make. And, and frankly, uh, we've always believed that the, uh, the real point of entry of a virus to a country is very often in a poorly equipped emergency room in a, in a doctor's clinic where there's no awareness of the disease uh, and not necessarily in points of quarantine or points of entry. We, we do support entry screening and other measures as a part of a comprehensive package. But what we absolutely have to avoid in this case is disease arriving uh, in, a, in an unprotected health facility with untrained, unaware workers uh, and having a, an amplification of disease in a clinical setting. We've seen what's happened with other diseases that do that, be it Lassa or Ebola in clinical settings in, in, in countries with weak health systems. We know the damage that a virus like this can do in that setting. So we are focusing on supporting countries with weaker health systems to strengthen the key, most important elements of their system. Their ability to detect, their ability to confirm, their ability to isolate cases safely and provide safe care. The last thing we need at this point is the frontline health workers themselves becoming victims of the disease. This is an absolutely important uh, factor. So, uh, again, where countries have more resources, they can put in place much more comprehensive measures. And you can argue what the cost efficiency of that is, That's, uh, and you can argue many things. What we want to do is ex be sure to extract the value from every dollar that's invested through and with uh, developing countries in particular, that we ensure we get the best value for that investment. Um, and yes, we are looking, <clears throat> as, as we speak, at uh, a systematic review of quarantine measures historically and trying to give countries more advice and give them more um, information as how to make those trade-offs and what is the value for money of quarantine measures and, and, and the historical costs of doing that. So uh, we'll continue to push that information to our member states, but uh, we don't believe there's a paradox in, in that approach. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go now back to our journalist online. Uh, can we try, uh, Chris, please, to get Helen Bransfell? Hi, thanks very much. Can you hear me? Yes, Helen, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I wanted to uh, find out more, if I could, about mild uh, cases. Is the uh, picture coming into focus at all about whether mild cases are transmitting and, you know, what potential they have to drive this outbreak outside of China? Thanks, Helen. So Yes, I mean we're we're learning. There are some studies that are that need to be conducted, and these are studies. These are vir virus shedding studies, and we need to look at uh, mild individuals all the way through severe individuals, and that systematic data collection and sampling of mild 
cases as well as severe cases is something that's really urgently required for us to get a clear handle on this and to quantify the amount of shedding that is happening from mild individuals to severe individuals. We do know that mild individuals shed virus. We know that severe individuals shed virus. Which proportion of those that drive this outbreak, um, it needs to come into, into more clear focus. We know that the more symptoms you have, the, that, that you are more likely to, sh to, to transmit. This is a respiratory pathogen, and so transmission is through droplets, through close contact with droplets. Um, but we do know that individuals that are mild also have respiratory samples. So this data is something that is urgently needed, and we advocate for countries all over the world, if you have cases, to, to c collect this type of information from your cases so that we can quantify this. And we're also expanding collaboration and again the DG mentioned that the R&D work that's going to that's rolling out as we speak is based on years of investment in, in the R&D blueprint platform and with our partners well this work on, on coronavirus is built on 70 years experience in, in influenza surveillance so we're building on influenza surveillance building on a massive network of influenza labs linking them with emerging disease labs and, and uh, coronavirus labs and effectively going to use those antenna that we have in the global system listening posts to see if this virus is pitching up in a broader community sense mm -hmm. we can't wait uh, for the serology tests to become available because at the moment we can only test for the virus as in the particles of the virus in, in swabs from the patient. What we can't test is someone who's perfectly well, whether they've had a recent infection, and we need serology tests, blood tests that can test that, and we can look at the overall population attack rates, how many people in the population have had the infection, and then we can make the comparison with severity. We don't have those tests. We've hardly known this virus for a month. It's incredible that we have PCR tests. It's incredible that we're able to diagnose it, but we need the serology tests to be able to do the broader population-based study. So there's still much to be uh, learned but we have as i said a lot of capacity out there we need to put all of that capacity to use to learn more about the the actual impact of this disease at community level can i can i pivot back to the research meeting next week so this is exactly this meeting that Dr. Tedros mentioned from the, on the 11th and 12th next week of bringing together the world scientists, public health professionals, individuals who are treating patients to come together and say what are the most critical things that need to be done. This is one of them, but there are many. <coughs> Thank you very much. We have a time for one more question. Let's go to Ronnie from New York Times. Ronnie, can you hear us? Hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you. I like much better today. Can, um, can, do we have any clear data? I know you've mentioned um, uh, uh, people over 60 being more vulnerable with, with people with underlying conditions, but do we have anything else about the demographic breakdown? Um, men seem to be more affected. What kind of data do we have from confirmed cases in China? Thank you. So, yes, yeah, so I mentioned that... Data, data uh, gender and age and... So we have some data from Chinese authorities uh, around age that I mentioned, the older, the older ages. Um, we have seen a, a, a breakdown of, of uh, advanced age, and it, it appears even over 80 is the highest risk factor. Um, that increasing age um, increases, the risk, is, increases the risk for death. Thank you very much. So I think we will have to stop here. And uh, again, uh, apologies that we are changing the rooms. Uh, uh, this is because of executive board. Hopefully, as of next week, we will have a permanent place for us. Uh, I wish we will to see them tomorrow. But we will see them tomorrow, for sure. For those who didn't have a time to ask questions today, uh, then you will have an opportunity tomorrow. Uh, thanks to everyone who was watching us on our Twitter and Facebook account, uh, to, to all journalists online. Uh, and. Um, See you again tomorrow. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Let me bring this up. Here, we'll kill the display for now. And bring our table up. Okay. So, I thought that was worth watching. Um, yeah. I love Sp I love Spider-Man. Agreed. Uh, after I watched it today earlier, I was like, okay, um, we need to watch that. That was very, I'm um, speechless. Yeah, there is so much you can unpack in that news briefing. I've listened to some other ones that the WHO does and other people do. Um, there was triggers there that 
like uh, for example the director general the person that was sitting in the middle he went off on just like we're all dead <laughs> so, he went off for a few minutes on sending his best to the people on wuhan and why he couldn't visit there or he didn't say why he couldn't visit there. He, he was sad that he didn't visit there and he would like to visit them someday that to me seemed very weird like that's the one i was mentioning i love spider-man that was sounded to me very weird um another thing that i liked is the lady that was speaking uh she really um uh, focused on that there are different levels of this virus the sickness so everyone that gets infected doesn't get sick to the same level right some people just show flu symptoms right and live their life and they recover now the kicker is if some people are getting this virus and they're showing the flu symptoms and nothing else kicks in if they're at home they're not going to go seek treatment because they're going to say oh it was just a flu right so are they still going to be contagious are they spreading it to other people hey chicho hey chat nicholas how are you doing that's just so odd to say that that was so odd to say that i love you spider-man that was so odd to say that when he went off i'm assuming that's what you're referring to i hope you're doing well nicholas you're probably getting ready to go to work brother you've got your schedule down packed <laughs> So I, I, I found that interesting. Um, the other person, the ex, this one level down from the general, the white guy that was sitting on the, I guess, left side. Um, he also mentioned that the graph is starting to taper down, calm down a little bit. Is, is looking less like this, which was a good sign. Um, it did come up that certain countries are not able to close their borders quarantine and they did mention that funds are quite important so there's a um, you know there's a drive for money there's that there's this there's there was so much there i watched it i was in awe a little bit and then I went back to processing my data, getting the graphs ready for you guys to take a look at them, right? And for those of you who've joined, these are the graphs that we've seen so far. This is the table table that, um, because we're coming towards the end of the stream, I, I figure we'll go do another run through of the graphs, right? And I'll keep on reading the chat. Yeah, bro, just after 6 a.m. here. So time for work. <laughs> nice. You get up. Me and you have the same schedule, but on different time zones i get up fairly early too nicholas i like it i like it a lot um so we basically i provided one two three four five six seven eight graphs right so each one of these columns is a graph that we're just about to just will cycle through because we talked about these graphs at the beginning of the stream okay so might as well give everyone now that we got the information from who and we talked a little bit about it. We watched a little short video explaining what it is according to the WHO and stuff like this. Now we can look at the data again, which is one thing you do with mathematics. You plot your data, you look at the data, you tabulate your data, you try to figure out your data, and then you go and get more information and you come back to your data and take a look at it with brand new eyes, right? That's the whole process of analyzing data, okay? So let's pop up these tables so the first graph we're going to take a look at is um, the number of infections in china mainland number of infections and next one is number of infections outside of china and then percent growth per day in china percent growth per day outside of china death toll numbers recovery numbers the death ratio and the recovery ratio okay so i'm gonna close this and i'll provide these uh, link to uh, this data the tabulated stuff and graphs uh in discord and our discord page uh, most likely in science because this is data that we're doing and i'll probably tweet these out tomorrow uh maybe and mines and gab and vk i started off too so let me close this here's the graph this is what the graph looks like with total confirmed cases coming out of china 
right? This is for a two and a half week period, starting from January 19, 2020, going all the way to February 4th, 2020. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, well, 17 days. Why am I counting the scale, right? I was going to ask if you could post the data in Discord. Haha, <laughs> I'll look out for it. For sure, I love you, Spider Man. If not tonight, I'll do it tomorrow um, because I've been going fairly ballistic today. <laughs> I'm going to be burnt out after this, right? Uh, so, this is the first graph. Keep this in mind. This is the key one because this is where the epicenter is, and we're seeing how the numbers are growing, right? because the next graph is the numbers outside of china which is looking like this and it's starting to look linear so this looks a little bit better than this graph this graph still has an exponential feel to it this one which is number of confirmed cases outside of china still looks linear right but there is a little bit of oscillation there and this is at the beginning stages because if we look at the china one in here the day one to five was still linear right and then we started getting cases coming in and started going exponential so keep this in mind this is in the early stages right so this is the numbers of infected total confirmed total confirmed outside of china mainland china this is the percent growth per day in china so how much the number of infected number of confirmed cases has grown from day to day right so we're sitting around 20 percent so if 10,000 cases were confirmed yesterday then it would be 12 12 000 cases today right so 20 percent growth per day that's what it looks like it's stabilizing on hopefully this goes down okay outside of china the percent growth per day is oscillating starting to oscillate around the 10 percent mark which is better than china right and this is again at the beginning stages that's why you see high um, range right min maxes per day right we need this thing to stabilize to get a better idea of what's going on with the data right this is the total deaths okay both inside and outside of china but outside there's only one as far as i know one maybe two so majority of these deaths are in china so this is what the graph looks like and it doesn't look good i mean in a number of one how many days one two three four five days the number of confirmed deaths has gone from around 200 to 550 or something right so more than double in five days okay the good thing about this is the recovery rate is growing faster as it should right if it's two percent mortality which is what the data indicates right now that we know the recovery should be increasing a lot more a lot faster right so right now the total recovered has gone from around 200 to 1200 let's say so that's six times which is great in the same period that the number of deaths have a little more than doubled a little bit let's say doubled right so number of deaths have doubled but recovered has gone up six times which is great okay and then we have the death rate the percent ratio for the mortality rate which is again around two percent and this is data from china basically right what we know we'll get a confirmation of this uh, hopefully it doesn't grow but if it grows we'll know if this data is accurate or not i think the total death graphs is misleading might be better to graph death per day um well we did da, 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 da. oh death per day yeah well if you take into consideration if you do death per day what you can do is you can look at the death ratio and the growth rate that's why i graphed this one right Doop. this is the percent growth per day in china right i want to look at it not the absolute numbers because the absolute numbers aren't um, the absolute numbers is not what you want to go with you want to see relativistic numbers and relativistic numbers is percentages you're looking percent per day i don't want to look at the number of deaths per day because that's going to be increasing because there's more people infected you want to know how fast it's growing right 
and hopefully kick that down to zero and then people uh, will recover right so that that's what I was more interested in my concern about the number of death is if comp, com, complications by pneumonia or flu deaths were actually coronavirus death yeah and uh, from what the WHO said the uh, kidneys are failing and stuff too right and then this one is the recovery rate which is the percent of recovery which is increasing which is a really good sign right initially there was only you know around one and a half percent that were recovering about five days ago six days ago right now we're up to four percent and that percent should kick up a lot which is a great sign right so that's what we want to look at and again this is the table that we graph the information on okay so i just want to share that information um we will do a follow-up to this okay we'll look at the data maybe most likely in a couple of weeks let the data settle down a little bit and uh we'll create more more graphs is there a way to find that out um which part of it uh i love you spider-man the the growth rate per day because uh, there's you know this is the first level of analysis we could do we could take all the data and try to come up with some kind of function right and do a prediction of what it might look like three months from now right i'm pretty sure uh, cdc and who and stuff are doing it but again as they mentioned in the in the talk in the what do you call it media what we just watched this is in the early stages from what osaka said uh, my concern about the number of deaths is if complication by pneumonia or flu deaths was actually coronavirus death. yeah you know what i, I they do have to test uh, the kits right so i'm assuming that the confirmed number is everyone that they've already tested that has confirmed that they have the coronavirus I'm assuming that anyone that dies if they haven't tested their blood right or saliva or whatever the test is if they haven't tested it they're not including it in the number confirmed so I'm assuming the number confirmed means they've tested it so they know it's the coronavirus so they do have to test for the coronavirus right why is there 343 total death on 131 because that's what it was january 31st and these could be delayed a little bit right they might be releasing these numbers once they get confirmation from some central body that's coming up right but then 305 the next day is it 305 oh i must have punched this in wrong so death thank you for that 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 death total 305 yeah so that that part is wrong thank you very much for catching that mistake i'm going to fix that up so let me see what it, what the data says on the website so january 31st oh i did this because i wasn't tallying the stuff up um what do you call it i wasn't tallying the stuff up on a daily basis from the website i was collecting it i had to go down to their spreadsheet so i summed it up i was doing manual right I wasn't able to download their spreadsheet so i was doing accounts man manually so what i'm going to do is uh, go do a count on that and the table for that is death total so let's bring up the death total and find that data uh death ratio death total here's a death total so let's see which that point is and this is what you do that's the data right there so if this uh what do you call this the third data point right one two three the one that does a dip three or five so that one must be higher so i'm going to check the death rates um from the spreadsheet okay and if you guys get a chance from this spreadsheet if you from this guy it's always good to have second pair of eyes on this stuff right when you're manually punching in data that's one of the main things with data sets right there's mistakes made but if you go to this website in the bottom of the graph you'll see links downloadable google sheets new link here 
uh, and then there's time series table here and whatnot. I, joined, I just joined this. Would you say the situation is better or worse than what I'd hear on the news? Depends what news you're listening to. If you're listening to anything mainstream propagandist, I wouldn't bother listening to them, right? I heard of the potential ma uh, masking by government and what possibly uh, true gabble. We, we, what do you call it? We we just spent a whole couple of hours going through this, right? We talked a fair bit about this and watched the um, video from. Uh, what do you call it who talking about it and whatnot so um there's a lot to unpack here right um, we don't know right now it's in the early stages so right what we're doing is tabulating our data graphing it taking a look at what's going on according to the official numbers being reported but we're also uh, anyway i am anyway i'm keeping keeping track of some of the theories that are flying around because i'm really interested in those and some of those theories i tend to believe more than centralized institutions but i'm not gonna start propagating that until we get some proof and until we're a little bit deeper into this so we can have a little bit of mathematics to let us know what's going on my main concern just to let you guys know my main concern with this is india africa south america hopefully it doesn't get there but it will most likely um, but basically my main concern is if this thing goes into uh, where it has now that this thing has gone into areas which are uh, don't have as much resources at their disposal to contain the virus to see what happens there right that's my my main concern is uh, just to let you guys know the theories that there's like five or six theories right now uh, that are possibly viable but we can talk those about those on another day maybe during a politics or something like this uh, i just want to focus on the data for this one um, the official official numbers right Aside from that, gang, uh, that's a two-hour stream on the coronavirus. I hope uh, I hope you found it informative. I hope uh, I hope you like. We'll follow this up. We'll continue uh, to follow this thing, and we'll do most likely another update to this table in a couple of weeks. Okay, I'll keep track of the numbers, and if you, I'll, I'll post these uh, this table and the graphs on discord uh hopefully i'll get it i might get a chance to correct the 305 data but if you see any mistakes that i might have done in the spreadsheet which i could have done easily please let me know and we'll update it and i've never well we'll figure it out maybe we'll create a open spreadsheet where people can play around with the data no i'm glad you liked it uh, i love you spider-man Thank, my pleasure nicholas my pleasure i thank the twitch gods for recommending your channel that they recommend me that's cool <laughs> youtube is not recommending me anymore since i've been loading on julian assange and doing doing this stuff like they're not they don't even allow coronavirus anything to be monetized, right but this is what i do i, I like data i like information I, like, I share what i'm interested in right so this is what i'm doing so that's one of the reasons i really like twitch uh right now because they don't have major disney filters up right so they haven't kicked people down into the into the never levered lands like the way we have to a certain degree on youtube right thank you chicho we will have an update to your next schedule will you have an update uh the update i love you spider-man soon um give me a few days i gotta catch up i gotta catch up uh most likely um we're not gonna do a stream um, because I do want to shoot a video I have a comic book haul that I've done I printed off 11 pages I collected all the went through did all the research for, you know who who the artists the writers were and little 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 bit of history it's only like 26 books but I want to go through that with you guys and I'm going to try to shoot that in the next few days so I do want to make a video on that and I have to upload all the live streams we've done so far I want to cut this little segment out uh, the initial segment where we went through the, 
the tables and the graphs for this um, I'd say an update <laughs> on uh, on the next schedule in, in a few days in a few days I'm also this is the first uh, since I've been feeling I had the flu uh, this is the first four days in a row that we did so it is taxing uh, it has been taxing on my on my throat and stuff so I think I need a little bit of uh, but most likely towards the end of next week we're gonna have more uh, streams coming in okay thanks so much it's my pleasure Suro. I'm so giddy I can't wait for more comic book videos <laughs> me too I've been dying to make these I've been dying to oh I love you spider-man oh no I won't I won't give you any spoilers I'll show you I'll show you in that on that video that we're gonna upload and uh you'll you'll be happy you'll be happy you'll be happy aside from that gang thanks for being here thanks for the conversations thank you for the discussion thank you for the subs thank you for the follows um thank you for the support and thank you for correcting um, my data entry mistakes i'll try to correct it um, tomorrow morning or tonight or something like this and i'll have these up um, tomorrow on discord for sure and possibly on uh, on the social networks as well okay no problem thank you for stream my pleasure yay thanks chicho enjoying the stream stay healthy you guys as well man you guys as well and wash your hands bye everyone hope you have a fantastic evening or morning nicholas bye for now